Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from October-November 2023, Paper 1, Variant 1. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together, let's improve together. Question 6 says, a projectile is fired from point P with velocity V at an angle theta to the horizontal. It lands at point Q, a horizontal distance capital R from P after time capital T. The acceleration of free fall is G, a resistance is negligible. Which equation is correct? So simply for this question, we need to calculate what is value of R means which equation we can use to calculate value of R. R is the range or simply you can say this is the horizontal displacement. So we can say this is horizontal displacement. Horizontal displacement. As there is no force along horizontal, it simply means that horizontal component of initial velocity, it will remain constant. Mean at any given time, horizontal component of velocity will be equal to the horizontal component of initial velocity. So simply we can say we have to take Vx multiply by time taken and Vx is equal to V cosine of theta times time. So we have times time. So we can say this is equal to V times t cosine of theta. So we have initial velocity and the horizontal component is V cosine of theta. So the answer for this question has to be A. Question 7 says a man stands in a lift that is accelerating vertically downwards as shown in the figure. Which statement describes the force exerted by the man on the floor? So first of all we need to understand acceleration is downwards. So this is direction of acceleration. So the net force also has to be in downward direction. Now, if we look at the forces acting on the person, there are two forces acting on the person. One is the gravity that is equal to the weight of the person. Then the second is the pushing force by the ground. So we can say this is normal reaction force. As this person is accelerating downwards, it simply means that W is greater than N or simply you can say N is lower than W. For this question, we need to find out force exerted by the man on the floor. So we can say N, this is the force on person, force on person by the ground. So we can say by the ground. So this is the force on person by the ground. We can also use this arrow, mean this is a vector. And the force here, we can say this is another n we can say this is the force on ground by person so this is force on ground by person or you can say by the man and these two forces they have the same magnitude but they are in opposite directions so this is the main concept here so if this point is clear to you now we can figure out answer option a says it is equal to the weight of the man no it is lower than so this is not possible it is greater than the force exerted by the floor on the man no they are equal in magnitude so this is also incorrect it is less than the force exerted by the floor on the man. No, they are equal. So this is also not possible. It is less than the weight of the man. Yes. So it is less than weight of the man. Beautiful question. Nice question. Just conceptual. So if your basic concepts are not clear, maybe you will be struggling with this problem. So these two points you need to understand. First of all, acceleration is down. It means the net force is downwards. Then we can look at the forces acting on the person. So there are two forces acting on the person. One is the weight and one is the pushing force from the ground. And the force by and the pushing force by the person on the ground that has to be equal in magnitude to normal reaction force but opposite in direction. Because these two forces, they are action and reaction forces. Action and reaction. They form Newton third law pair. So that's the reason they have same magnitude, but they have opposite direction. So the answer for this question has to be 
quantity. Question 8 says a ball of mass 200 gram is thrown horizontally with a speed of 20 meters per second against a vertical wall. The ball is in contact with the wall for a time of 0.10 seconds before rebounding back along its original path with a speed of 10 meters per second. What is the average force exerted by the wall on the ball during the collision so this is a typical type of question you will see this question means based on the same concept every year in every paper almost so the best way to answer this question is simply we can sketch first of all we can imagine this one is the vertical ball and the ball is coming mass of the ball is given we can say the mass of this one is 200 grams it means this is 0.2 kgs the initial speed of this one we have that is u and u is equal to 20 meters per second and the speed of this ball after rebound is also given to us we have value of v that is equal to 10 meters per second we need to calculate the average force on the ball and so we need to calculate value of f average this is simply equal to the change in momentum over time taken means over time in contact so in this case we need to understand force exerted by the wall on the ball so the force on the ball by the wall will be in this direction so this is direction of the force so force on the ball will be in this direction so this is direction of force on the ball so we will take in this case to the left positive so this is very important point so we will take to the left is positive so it means this is negative and this one is positive now simply we can use m times v minus u divided by delta t so we have value of mass that is 0 0.20 kgs and value of v this is 10 minus and u is negative so this is minus 20 divided by time in contact that is 0 0.10 now if we simplify this one we will get 0 0.20 and here we will get 30 divided by 0 0.10 now if we solve this one we will get our final answer uh, that will be equal to 60 newtons and this answer is positive so it means direction of force is to the left on the ball so this is how you can figure out typical question and in every paper you will see at least one question based on this equation so it's very important to understand how to use this so the answer for this one is question 9 says in an experiment a metal ball is dropped into a viscous liquid the terminal velocity of the ball in the liquid is measured the experiment is repeated four times for each repeat a change is made to one of the following the density of the metal of the ball the height from which the ball is dropped the density of the liquid the depth of the liquid which two changes separately affect the terminal velocity of the ball in the liquid this question is a little bit tricky one so let's try to answer this one step by step first of all we can simply imagine we have a cylinder so you can just imagine this one is the cylinder and this cylinder is filled with viscous liquid so we have viscous liquid inside this cylinder we can also imagine a ball so here we have a ball this is the ball for this question we need to consider the effect on terminal velocity and terminal velocity first of all we need to understand this is the constant velocity so simply we can say this is constant velocity constant velocity means that the net force on the ball will be equal to zero when it has reached terminal velocity now if you look at the forces acting on the ball when it has reached terminal velocity i hope you will simply say the force acting downwards this force will be the weight of the ball and there will be up thrust on this one up thrust will be very small we can say this is the up thrust and also there will be a drag force we can say that is fd so simply we can say in this case w has to be equal to up thrust up thrust plus 
drag force plus drag force in this case up thrust will be constant quantity so this quantity will stay constant and as the density of the liquid is much much lower than density of the ball so it means that up thrust will be very very small for simplicity and for better understanding of this problem we can simply say in this case when the ball has reached terminal velocity weight will be equal to drag force and drag force is equal to 6 pi eta r times v and v is the terminal velocity v is the terminal velocity so we can also say weight of the ball that will be equal to the density of the ball times the volume of the ball times g now if simply we look at this equation if i keep for example the size of the ball if we keep constant and if we keep the viscosity of the liquid constant it means that terminal velocity also has to be constant so terminal velocity also will stay constant if we're using the same liquid all the time it means that terminal velocity will be the same if we keep the density of the ball same we keep the volume of the ball same so it means that terminal velocity will remain constant if we change the viscosity for example if we change the viscosity and we keep the same so it means we will change for example if we increase the viscosity and all other factors we keep same it means the terminal velocity will go down and vice versa is also true so it simply means that if we change for example this density of the ball let's say we change the density of the ball we increase the density of the ball and we keep other factors same means we keep all these factors same so it means the terminal velocity has to increase terminal velocity has to increase so these are some basic points you need to understand i hope you start understanding how to answer this problem now if you look at the given options for option one means here the density of the metal of the ball if we change this density it means the terminal velocity also will change will change so it means this we have to consider this will affect the terminal velocity height from which the ball is dropped it does not affect but but this is a tricky one most of you will be struggling with this one why height is not affecting the reason is that let's say if i drop the ball from this point when the ball will reach at this point it will have different velocity we can say let's say it has velocity v1 if we drop the ball from this point when the ball will reach this liquid let's say its velocity is v2 its velocity will be different initial velocity will be different but when the ball is here it has reached terminal velocity if we keep the density same we keep the viscosity of the liquid same we keep the size of the ball same r same so how about the terminal velocity i hope you will say in both cases we drop the ball from this point or we drop the ball from this side when it will finally reach terminal velocity that will be the same all the time so we can say at this point vt1 this will be equal to vt2 terminal velocity will be the same i hope this makes sense to you another way of understanding this one is it will take a little bit long time but you can simply understand if at this point let's say v1 is greater than the terminal velocity let's say v2 for example v2 because height is greater is greater than terminal velocity what will happen when the ball will enter water the viscous force will be much greater than viscous force will be much greater than the weight so it means acceleration will be in upward direction so the ball will slow down it will finally come down to terminal velocity so that's the reason so it means height will not affect 
so this one we can ignore density of the liquid yes density of the liquid is linked with the viscosity of the liquid so these two quantities they are linked with each other so if density of the liquid we change it means we change the concentration of particles it means the viscosity also changes so this one will effect depth of the liquid it doesn't matter how deep is this liquid when it has reached terminal velocity it will just go with the same velocity down i hope you will say we can also ignore this one it will not affect the terminal velocity i hope this makes sense to you if still it is not clear you can leave your questions in comments and i will try to answer it's very important try to picture this one in your mind so the answer for this question has to be B. So B is the right answer. A beautiful question, conceptual question. Try to visualize this one. And if one time this is not clear to you, watch video again, it will be clear to you. And if this explanation was helpful, please like and subscribe and also leave some comments in comment section. And if you need more help and you're looking for extra resources, you can also join Patreon and the link for Patreon you can find in the description of this video. Question 10 says two objects move towards each other along the same straight line. After colliding, the two objects stick together and objects are stationary. This statement must be correct. So it is given to us these two objects, they collide and after clean, they stick together and these objects, they are stationary. So it simply means that the final momentum is equal to zero. So by conservation of momentum for an isolated system, for an isolated system, so we are treating this system as an isolated system. So the initial momentum has to be equal to the final momentum. Now, if you look at uh, given options, for option A, it is given to us the total kinetic energy of the objects does not change during the clean. Kinetic energy has been changed because they are at rest. So it means kinetic energy, final kinetic energy is equal to zero. So it means that total kinetic energy changes. So this option is incorrect. The total momentum of the two objects before the collision is zero. Yes, this is true because we are treating this one as an isolated system. So the initial momentum has to be equal to final momentum. So this can be the answer. The two objects have equal mass. This is not important. Even their mass is different. If their initial momentum is zero, the final momentum also will be equal to zero. So this is not correct. The two objects have the same speed before the clean. If the mass is different, the speed will be different. But these two objects, they have the same momentum, but in opposite direction. So that's the reason momentum before clean is equal to zero. So the best answer for this question is B. The point you need to understand is for an isolated system, total momentum is zero means the change in momentum is equal to zero it simply means that momentum before clean is equal to momentum after clean same magnitude and also same direction or simply you can say change in momentum has to be equal to zero so the answer for this question is b